Morning Time Church, morning you too. Awesome, wonderful, incredible, blessed to be in God's house today. It's a privilege, it's an honor to be with my, my dear brothers and sisters that I love dearly. I love them more and more each Sunday I see them. You know, I lost a dear friend this past week and I tell people this all the time, that when you lose someone that you care about, you need to love more. You need to take that love you have for that person. That doesn't mean you don't love that person anymore, but cast that love upon others and just share it and realize how precious life really is. Today's message we're going to talk about, it's called hope. A lot of people don't have it. Our country needs it. Our leaders certainly don't give it. There was two men that got up early in the morning and decided to take their 20-foot boat and venture out to the ocean. They did it many a times before. Many a times. It was a beautiful day. Calm as could be. The ocean was calm. The sun was beautiful. Gentle breeze. They get in their boat. They load up. And they hear the fish are fighting. So they take off in their 20-foot boat. And they realize they could go far today because it's so calm. When the ocean's calm, you can project your boat further. So they go out some 50 miles. Normally they wouldn't do that, but today was a perfect day. The fish are biting. They're happy. They're having a great time. It is just a wonderful, blessing day of, of fishing. And then before you know it, without their knowing and awareness, the wind kicks up and a storm comes. And before you know it, the calmness of the sea now is a raging mess. Waves three, four, five feet. And they soon realize they didn't prepare for this. They didn't know that this storm was going to come. And they realized their 20-foot boat would not withstand the tempest or the storm that was coming towards them. So like most people, common sense, they try to prepare. They put their life vest on and they packed up whatever food they had in a bag because they knew the boat would turn over and fail them. And soon longer it did. The boat gets hit with a wave, it flips, it sinks. They now are held together by their life jackets and the food, little backpack of food they brought with them. So at first they're thinking, this is no big deal. The Coast Guard will come by, our wives will think, wow, oh, they're not home yet. Let's, let's send out a search party. And then they start joking about, it. God, this, this is going to be a good story. But then they soon realized they didn't tell anyone where they launched their boat from. They didn't take a GPS coordinate. They didn't take anything to alert anyone where they were. And they soon realized that their, their struggles is erasing or taking away any hope they had. After 12 hours of fighting the waves and the wind and everything else, they soon realize they are fatigued and barely can survive because the jacket's keeping them afloat, but that's it. They realize in their distress that maybe they weren't the men or the fathers or the husbands that they needed to be. They realize they have regrets that they never became the man of God they were called to be. And as they're sitting preparing for their watery death, they lose all hope. Without hope, all is lost. Without hope, man's purpose of life is not there. Without hope, man is doomed to a Christless eternity. Hope. The first one I have up there is hold on, pain ends. Hope. Hold on, pain ends. As I sat at the edge of the hospital bed and watched my good friend struggle to breathe because he was choking on his own vomit, as he was fighting the cancer that was raging through his body, he knew that his hope was fading. My first scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 14 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 14 to 18. 
by May. 4, 14, 18. Know that he which is raised up, the Lord Jesus, shall raise up also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but a, for a moment, worketh for us far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. To the man that seems hope is but a distant memory or is impossible to grasp as my dear brother was dying he knew that he would see his precious grandchildren grow up to marry to graduate to just grow up into men and women that he aspired them to be he knew that he would never get in his custom mustang and take it for one last ride his hope as he knew it was no longer present And as, as his dear friend and as a pastor, I shared with him the hope that only Jesus Christ can bring. And he didn't want any of it. He wasn't buying any of it. And as time permitted, my persistence and the Holy Spirit gave me a beautiful opportunity on a Saturday morning when things were quiet at the hospital. His family wasn't there, and I knew his hope was disappearing permanently. And he asked me, I'm worried about my future, which gave me the beautiful opportunity to tell him about my Jesus. So through the process of him losing hope, I shared the gospel with him numerous times, but finally, through God's grace and mercy, and through the love, his heart went from one without hope to one seeking it. His heart now is open and pliable to the truth. And as I knelt next to his bed on the tile floor, and I prayed and led him to the Lord, he now had hope. A hope that will never fade. A hope that does not disappear as everything else in life does as we get older and the aches and pains come and all those things that take away all the youthfulness of us. But we also have a hope in the future. The day we are with Christ, the pain, whether it's physical, we all have physical, some kind of physical pain, but a lot of us have Emotional pain. Maybe someone really hurt us deeply, whatever. The day we go and have the hope in Christ and trust him and go to his presence, those things no longer exist. They cannot nag at you. That backache or that heartbreak will not to come and try to steal your hope away no longer. My dear brother, had his body destroyed by cancer. I watched it before my very eyes. But the hope he had and the hope I have and the hope you all should have is that the day the Lord returns and calls those sleeping in Christ a promise of a new glorified perfect body without no more pain or struggles. Praise God for his goodness and his mercy. Hope. He's our planned escape. When I was a kid, I'd go to Dorney Park. Most of you have been there and had this stupid ride. It was a glass house and it rotated and it was all glass, clear glass. And you had to get in the entrance and get out the exit. And when you're little and you're trying to go through every glass 
window thought it was an opening or an entranceway or an exit, and you soon found out uh -uh, it was a dead end. No different than those that challenge the corn mazes in the area, and they go in the corn maze, and they think, God, this is a joke. And they get halfway in, and an hour later, they start panicking. And soon, they raise the big red flag. Here I am. I am lost. I do not know how to return to the entrance or find the exit. And they get themselves out of her. But the thing is, many people try to escape. Many people try to get out of things. And going back to the entranceway, we know there's only one perfect entranceway. And that is through Jesus Christ. He is our only truth, as we know. He's the only perfect thing. Now let me put this in a parallel. The parallel is this. And I know I jumped ahead one, but there's a reason for it. God has me going on a different reason. The perfect parallel is the coming of the man to Jesus Christ. Many know about him. Many know that God exists, yet they fail to follow the perfect entranceway to salvation or the perfect eternity. And they go so far and by the ways of their religion or their traditions and different things and they struggle. They think that the 200 year tradition that great grandpa had is something that is gonna get them in good standing and mercy with God. They think by me giving, by me providing, by me working at the church or whatever the church does and I'm there and I'm working that they have the entrance way to heaven. But I'm here to tell you, no. Those things will all be deceptive and lead them as me on the amusement ride to the wrong way, to the dead end. And I get there, it's like, whoa, this is still class. That is most people that don't trust Jesus Christ as their personal savior. They come to a dead end. Jesus say, I'm the way the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Me. Amen. It's Jesus Christ. Let's take a step back if we may. Let's get this thing right if we could. He's our planned escape. He's our planned escape. Our planned escape. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you. That's what I'm here for. The world tries to escape reality. They watch Marvel comics. They watch other things. They get caught up in Top Gun. They get caught up in everything but reality. They get caught up in, you know what? I'm gonna to try to escape the pain I have by turning to the bottle, turn it to a pill, turn it to something you smoke. Things that will bring temporary escape Things that will provide a temporary pleasure and escape and think, I'm okay. But you know what happens? You wake up. The effects of the alcohol, the effects of the drugs, the effects of the marijuana, the effects of the high you had no longer exist. And people look and say, oh, my escape is not there. And they struggle. They struggle. And it breaks my heart. Maybe they had, they're trying to escape from something. A bad childhood. Bad marriage. Bad life. They move to a, you know, a different area and think, you know, this is my escape. I'm going to get away from him. Or I'm going to get away from her. Or I'm going to get away from this. And this is going to be my new escape. And I always tell people, the grass may be greener, but guess what? You still got to cut it. Amen? Amen. Still got to cut that grass. Too many people blame everything on someone or something. They blame their parents. Oh, I have bad parents. It breaks my heart. Because a lot of times people won't step up 
and take responsibility for their self because they want to do the blame game. And they figure, if I can escape from something that will take me away, but there's only one perfect escape. The only way to escape a struggle in life, life is a struggle. I'm not here to tell you, life is perfect. Is having hope in the promise that Jesus brings forth. Listen to this. Being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up now makes it become permanent. Don't forget, a lot of people think, you know, I'm a Christian. This shouldn't happen to me. Well, yes, it should. Because then God is trying to show you something that you need maybe to address or turn over to him and get through it. Let me read Psalm 145, 17 to 21. Psalm 145, 17 to 21 reads, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and is holy in all his works. Yes, he is. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in the truth, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. When I'm talking fear, I'm not talking you're in the corner. I'm talking reverent fear out of love and respect for God the Father. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all the flesh bless the holy name forever and ever. Perhaps, listen to this. You may be dealing with something today that is trying to steal your hope. That's what Satan wants. He wants nothing more than to be deceived and thinking that, you know, Jesus Christ, to take away what Christ has given. Taking your promise that only Christ can give. Perhaps it's time to toss aside those things. Listen to this. That are a temporary escape. And this is for people on YouTube as well. A temporary escape. Maybe it's some people, they'll sit and watch a program for 10 hours. It's called binge watching. I don't know how you do it, but I'm not going to do it. Because to me, I have more important things to do than binge watch TV. I've heard people do it. We watch from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. Well, congratulations for your stupidity. It's crazy. But people do it. People, maybe drug is not your choice or alcohol, but a lot of people and Christians will use money as their escape. You know, when I buy this new, not me, the woman, when I buy this new ensemble, I feel so much better. Or when I buy, you know, whatever it may be. And it brings them temporary pleasure. You hear me? Temporary pleasure. Only Jesus Christ is the perfect hope that lasts forever. Ever. Yes. Those other things, they'll take your money. You go on eBay, you go on Amazon, whatever. They have no problem taking your money. You binge watch, guess what you're going to lose? A lot of time. A lot of time. That's the key. Only surrendering the life to him. We sing songs about it all the time. Surrender to him, surrender to him, surrender thy will to him. That's what it's all about. Tossing aside yourself, your own strength. Too many times we, guilty as charged, try to tackle things on our own strength. My own strength is not nearly good enough. Not nearly good enough. We cannot and will not ever escape on our own authority or power. Do you understand that? We cannot do it. But the man or woman that cries out to the Lord and says, I can't do it anymore. I will fall upon thee and I will surrender to thy will, to thy calling. Because this is what I want. I'm no longer going to live for all the things that I thought were the things that were to give me hope. They won't. They won't. In my lifetime, I tried most of them. 
Guess what? Er, no good. No good. No good. A lot of people don't want to give God everything. They fear they want a relationship. And this is the truth with, with many, even people in churches. Many want that relationship they have with the boyfriend or girlfriend that was on again, off again. Oh, are you together? Well, this week we are. You talk to them next week, they're not. The week after, oh yeah, we're all, oh, we're in love. We're back together. And then they go and oh no, we broke it off again. That is most people with the relationship with God. One week it's good, next week it's like, nah, you got other things to do. Let me read entirely Psalm 46, if I may. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth may be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad, excuse me, the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles, tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, and God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, who what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, and he cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot of fire. This is the most important part of this part I need you to understand. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Most of us here, and you got to be honest with yourself. In order to have the relationship God calls you to have, you have to examine yourself and come to the Lord and say, you know what? I need you to examine me even more. I'm not a doctor. I'm just someone that's going to examine myself quickly. And you open. We are all guilty of getting caught up in a fast-paced life. Amen? This is the truth. I do. I get caught up in it. We need to, we try to slow down. You know when you try to slow down, what happens? It speeds up. It gets worse. It gets crazier. We allow stress. And we lose hope because we don't have peace upon our life. Be still and know that I am God. Many fail to hear God's voice. You know why? Because we're too busy. We're too fast. He's going 20 miles an hour, but we're going 30. It's impossible. Why do you think God speaks to me at night? So he got me. I'm laying there. I have nowhere to go. I'm trying to sleep. That's when I prepare my heart before him. When do you prepare yours? It's important. Be still and know that I am God. So powerful. The world says, be, the word says, we still know that I am God. Friends, we need to slow down. Listen to this. Slow down and need to allow the presence of God to come upon us when we sit quietly. When we sit quietly. When we cast aside the fast-paced life and say, you know what? I'm setting this time aside. I'm going to go in my prayer closet or my room by myself and I'm going to talk to my Lord and spend time with him and ask him to examine me, to ask him to reveal to me through his word what he has in store for me. This is what I do. There's other ways of doing it, but you need to do it. Amen? Amen. We need to do it. We feel the presence when we slow down. We read the word. We allow it to enter in. Enter in. God will show you so much through the word. 
because that's what he wants. He will reveal to us through his word and show us, be still. He is God, he is above, and he is your father. Amen and amen. Amen. Hope, he's our precious everything. Our precious everything. Our precious everything. Well, I got everything, Pastor. Do you have Christ? Well, no. Then you certainly don't have everything. Why is it so difficult for man to realize that Jesus died for them? Why is it? Is it pride? Is it self-righteousness? How about this one? Maybe it's the fact that they can't accept that someone did something for them without any strings attached. Listen to this. Me, you, we all did the sinning. Jesus did the saving. Amen. Is it the fact that most people struggle to believe that someone would die for them out of love? Because no one ever does that in this world, that's for sure. A world that expects things, this, this blows my mind. People expect things in forms of entitlements and things they didn't earn, but yet they struggle to take the free gift of grace that God has provided. Blows my mind. I'm too deep. I'm too thought-provoking. I don't understand it. The path to salvation is simple. Laid before man through Jesus Christ. By the way of the cross, it's simple. Bridge the gap. There's the cross. There's no more ravine. We can walk right to the access of the Father. Yet, man struggles to accept and believe what Jesus Christ did for them. How is this possible? Blows my mind. Maybe it's because we live in a world that believes and relies on man's ways. We do. The false promises that they present but never come through with. Well, I'm here to tell you that the God I love who presented Jesus Christ upon the cross did not make a false promise. The word of God tells it. It's the truth that Jesus died for you and died for me out of love for you and me, out of love and obedience to God the Father, out of love for mankind. I don't know why, but I, nor you, can never claim to be God, nor do we want to. But he did it because his grace and his long-suffering and his mercy far exceeds our mental <laughs> intellect. Let me put it to you real simple. I went over this at Bible study. God puts things in my heart and makes it simple for me because then I can break it down. The mountain climber takes his next step. He's 500 feet. He's climbing. He's climbing. He's strong. He's all jacked up. And he's strong and he's youthful. And he has confidence to know that he has the grip that he can hold on. But he has the rope around him and he has the, you know, the whatever, the calipers. And he's, he's attached and he's doing really well. And he, he don't look down because he knows if he looks down, he might have a bit of fear coming to him but he climbs and he relies upon his own abilities he trusts the rope that suspends him he trusts the safety man you have another person that is connected to you so if you do cut loose they're going to hold you from falling to your rocky death this is a man that knows not the lord let me break it down for you this is Pastor Tim's parable, okay? Let me break it down. The man trusts in his own abilities, but fails to trust God. Trust in the wealth and material things, which takes them from God. And relies on man-made religion, which denies God's grace. It teaches man, you can do it on your own strength and abilities. Isn't God good? Only God can put that in my heart. Romans 5, 1 to 11. Romans 5, 1 to 11, if I may. Therefore, being justified by faith, praise God, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith in the grace wherein we stand and rejoice, there it is, in the hope of the glory of God. God. 
And not only so, but glory and tribulations, also known that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Who is the ungodly? Anyone that did not confess and believe upon Jesus Christ as your Savior. We were all there. For scarcely for a righteous man shall die, yet peradventure a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us. And why yet, you sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified. Now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. From the wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Jesus Christ is our only true hope. I can't emphasize this enough. Jesus Christ. This is what you tell people that, that don't know the Lord, but yet are struggling in life. They don't know where to turn. They, they just think that life is just this wicked miracle around it. You never get off, and it just gets worse. Jesus Christ died for you, not because you are worthy. I was not worthy. I didn't deserve it. Nor did you. He died for you out of love and obedience to the Father. He died for, for you out of, out of love for you. You hear that? Out of love for you. Think about your past, some of you. If I think about mine, man, wow. The precious hope for the man is that believes upon Jesus Christ. He should be spared the wrath of God. People don't talk about the wrath of God because they don't want to know it. They don't want to know that the God that's been patient, the God that's been long suffered, the God that's been quiet will be a wrathful God one day. People don't want to hear that. Oh, Pastor, you're doomed. You're, you're you know, hellfire and brimstone preacher. Well, praise God, I am. Spare the wrath of God. We are saved by his, by his death. The hope, if the world ends today, that the trump sounds. And you, if you confess and believe upon the Lord, you, brother or sister in Christ, will be spared his wrath and will not experience the tribulation. Titus 3, 4, 7, you don't have this. But after the kindness of love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, that takes away religion, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. There it is. By the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Christ Jesus, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Salvation did come to man. In the form of Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? Salvation comes to man when he did not deserve it. Did you deserve it? I did it. Salvation comes to man when Christ took my place upon the cross. And rose three days later to say death cannot hold him. There is, he has a victory over it. Which is the promise of eternal life for those that believe upon him. Hope. Hope is our promised eternity. Hope is our promised eternity. Our promised eternity. What does that mean? What does eternity mean, Pastor? I hear people preach about it. It's a long time. It's a long time. It's forever. It's forever. As I prepare for, listen to this, as I prepare for retirement, and I see the gas price is just insane. Open the valve already. As I see food prices rising, let's get some regulation. I'm not making a political stand. I'm just saying this is crazy already. 
I think, will I have enough money to live? Will I have enough money to survive with these high costs of living? Then I reflect on what it is to have faith in God, that his plans far exceed this guy's plans or your plans. His plans are perfected. His plans are true. And he, if you follow his plans, they will always be right. Then it puts me in the air, listen to this. It puts me in the everything perspective that life is temporary. Do you know life is temporary? But eternity is what? Forever. 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 That in itself should make people running into the church doors at this time of year or at this time of chaos in our country. But it don't. If we focus on the future instead of the present, we will soon realize the choices we make now determine our future and what we live for. That's the truth. It's the truth. Anyway, this pastor struggles why many people just live for the present. I can't explain it. There is no, and I'm not talking about put money aside for retirement, your 401k, your IRA. I'm talking about putting a fund of your spirit aside for eternal life. Most people fail to do it. Fail to do it. 1 John 5, 12 to 13 reads. 1 John 5, 12 to 13 reads. Listen to this. This is, this is the word. This tells people what the truth tells them and how they follow. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You have to be pretty simple not to understand that. Amen? Amen. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And I'm moving right a chapter ahead. John 11, 26 and 27 reads. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. So he said unto him, Ye Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Jesus says, marvel not. He is not a fantasy. He is not a false hope like many of us have put in people we voted for over our lives or things we put money into. You know, you have a lot of people put their life savings into funds and they soon find out that it was a scam and their funds are gone. You know, mom always told me if it seems too good to be true, guess what? It's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. Anyway. The fantasy, it's the truth because of the word of God. Jesus provides and promises all that believe upon him, they will never die. What? What? You mean I got to live in this earth forever? I don't think so. No. He promises the believer that when they breathe their last, it's not the end. When they breathe their last, their spirit will be united with Christ. And when he does sound the trump. And when he does return, he calls those sleeping in Christ, they will have their new glorified bodies. Thank the Lord. Think about that itself. That's a praise God. That's a praise God. Anyway, think for a moment about one of your most wonderful days in your life. I want you to think about this. Maybe it was your marriage. Maybe it was the birth of your child. Maybe it was a beautiful vacation. Like, I know people that went to Israel and said, oh, pastor, you don't understand. It is wonderful. It's beautiful. It's peaceful. Or maybe it's Jamaica Mon or something like that. Wherever it may be, you were, you were there like, this is, this is heaven. Not even close. I can't even describe it because I don't know it that well enough, but I will know it the day I breathe my, my last and if you have hope in your eternal life through Jesus Christ, you too will have paradise that will be undescribable. It's not living as this world. If this is the best it's got to offer, guess what? I'm not buying. But I know it's not. John 10, 27 to 28 reads, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give unto them eternal life. 
and they shall never perish. Neither shall man pluck them out of my hand. My last paragraph. Let me read it to you if I may. Today, do you have hope? Do you have hope? If you're dealing with a struggle, you have a physical struggle right now, and you think, man, this is going to be the death of me. It may. But if you have hope in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. Do you have hope? He's your plan to escape. And I'm talking when life hits the fan and maybe your marriage isn't as wonderful as you want it to be. Or maybe your family's not great. There are not many that are. I'm here to tell you, sorry. Maybe other things in life, your job stinks so and so forth. You think, man, where's my escape? It's not through a bottle. It's not through a happy pill. They don't exist. I get high on Jesus Christ. Amen. He is my high and my all that sustains and keeps me on the path and provides the hope when sometimes it is a struggle. He's the only perfect entrance, pretty simple. No man's religion, no man's way. I don't care how much money you give to the church, you can give every penny you got. God don't need it. Do you think God needs your money? Do you think God needs you to do something for him? Absolutely not. He's complete. He's perfect. All he wants our heart. He don't want religion. He wants a relationship. It's that simple. It's that simple. You have hope knowing that Jesus is our pathway to precious salvation. Today you have hope for your eternity. I pray you do. I fear not death. Do I want to die today? No. I'll miss my wife. Smile at I miss my sons. I miss you all. I miss my cat. Yes, I will. <laughs> Do you focus on the present or are you looking towards the future? If you look towards the future, you're going to spend more time preparing for it. It's that simple. If you're looking towards the future, you will spend more time preparing for it. You're going to spend time in the Word. You're going to spend time coming together with the saints and assembly. You're going to spend more time just spending your alone time with the Lord. Finally, I pray, I hope, everyone here, everyone on YouTube does know Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's what I'm called to preach. I'm not here to tell you stories or jokes. I'm here to preach the gospel. Jesus Christ as your Savior. I pray and hope you turn to him in your turmoil. Too many people turn to friends. And guess what? This makes it worse. I turn to the Lord. I pray you hope you're striving to surrender your life to him. And you know you have the promise of eternity with him. Let us pray. Dear gracious love of Father, we just love you. We thank you. We thank you that you are the giver of hope. You are the provider of hope. You are hope that man or woman can come upon. You are the hope that gives us everything we need. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that you give us the hope through your, your, your death upon the cross and your rising three days later. You gave us hope when you took your rightful place at the right hand. You gave us hope when Paul preached to the Gentiles, you gave us hope the day we confessed and believed you as our Savior. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all you do. In your precious name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen.